In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to customize the terminal experience on your Mac. And the first step we're gonna take is by switching out the default terminal for iTerm2. So make sure to download iTerm2. You can go over to iTerm2's website, which is iTerm2.com, click the download button and install it like you would any other application. Now this is a Mac OS application, so this video doesn't apply if you are a Windows user. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do uh, once we've installed that is go over to this link, which I will leave in the video description, but this is a link to Gist by Kevin Smets. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the terminal that we just downloaded and we're gonna make it look something like this. So let me actually go ahead and open up item. So if I open up item, it looks something like this at the moment, which pretty much looks like the default terminal. But what we're gonna do is uh, fancy it up a little bit and install some themes and make it look like this. Now, some important points to highlight here is you can see that we've got a little bit of a separation between the current directory that we're working in. So we've got that like block around the tilde directory or the block around the test directory, which is the current working, working directory. We also have VCS, so we can see what um, branch we're working on if we're, if we're working in a Git repository. Now, if you don't know about Git yet, then this probably doesn't make any sense to you yet. But when you start working with Git, uh, then you will understand what it means to be on your master branch or to have a dirty or a clean branch. And all of that, all of those tools will be provided in our version or in our command line once we've installed uh, oh my ZSH or oh my Z shell and then the themes that we see here. So something else that's quite cool to, to take note of is that once we're done with this, we'll also have syntax highlighting. So we'll be able to see if a specific uh, command isn't going to run because it will highlight red or it will highlight green. Uh, so if there's an error, it will be red. Great. So uh, even uh, here's actually another example, power level 10K. Uh, or power level 10,000. So this is uh, just got some icons in it. So it just looks a little bit better. We've also got the time that we ran a specific command if we want to have that much information in our terminal. But usually that's the first thing I kind of remove. Uh, I don't like that feature. Anyway, so now that we know what we're aiming for, the next thing we want to do is just scroll down to how to install. The first step here is to install iterm2, which we have already done from this website. Uh, there is uh, the ability to install iterm using brew. So whenever you see a command, a brew command, that just means you need to run, um, or you need to install homebrew on your computer first. So once you've got homebrew installed on your computer, which you can install with this command, then you can run uh, all these brew commands. And then brew is really just a package manager that allows you to install other applications uh, onto your computer. So uh, this command would do the same thing that this button does, right? It would just install the software for you. So uh, yeah, uh, if you wanna go down that road, please do, uh, but I'm not going to talk about it in this video. So the next thing that we wanna do after installing iterm2 is to uh, use or install oh my Z shell or oh my ZSH. So oh my ZSH is a package by Robbie Russell. If you wanna read more about it, there's a link over here, but I'm just going to simply copy this command, this curl call, and we are going to paste that into the terminal and that will install oh my ZSH, which takes a few seconds. So once that's done, you should have a screen that looks like this where you've got uh, oh my Z shell. And if you type clear, you'll notice that the terminal actually looks quite different. So now we've just got an arrow and a tilde. Uh, we don't have all of the other information that we used to have before a command, which was like my full username and everything. So the next thing we wanna do is swap out theme. So when we ran this command, um, that command should have also created a Z shell RC file, which is a config file that we can use to configure our shell. So what we wanna do is open up this config file and I'm just going to copy that and I'm gonna go over to my terminal and type in open and then 
that command. I think you can even open this with uh, VS Code if we type in code and CSHRC, and that will open that up in VS Code. So now you can edit this file with uh, some syntax highlighting. Now, the first thing we wanna do here is, uh, whoops, I didn't know that that was gonna go that small. Um, yeah, so the first thing we wanna do is we just wanna change the Z shell theme to be Agnosta. So let's copy this and, whoops, go back to that theme there and paste over uh, Robbie Russell and make it Agnosta. So now that we've done that, Maybe let's just put the editor on a different screen. So we'll pop that over there. Um, but now that we've done that, we need to close the terminal. So we need to close that and we need to make sure that we quit it properly. So it just needs to be completely dead. And now when we open I up iTerm again, uh, we should have a very different looking theme. Now your theme might not look exactly like mine. I've actually customized my color scheme. So if we go to item uh, preferences, profiles and colors, um, there are some color schemes or color presets that we could have used. Uh, so there's a bunch of different options here, but I've actually made my own custom option, which I called flat colors and it's flat dark, which by the way, if you are looking for this color scheme, it is on my GitHub repository. So if we go to github.com slash Quinton Watt. So if you're looking for the same uh, flat item colors as me, I will leave a link to this uh, GitHub repository, which was made by me. And uh, yeah, you can get the same color scheme that I was using before. And all you need to do is actually download this file here, flat item colors, and uh, import that into your item preferences. So uh, download that file and then just import it with that setting. Okay. So now that we've got that out of the way, the next thing we want to do is continue on with the installation here, which is uh, power level 9,000 or power level 10,000. And what we want to do um, is copy this command, but this command is going to require that you have Git installed on your computer. So if you don't have Git installed on your computer just yet, you want to go over to Git's website, download and install this like you would any other application and then you can come back over to the instructions and then you can copy this command and you can paste that into the terminal. And this is gonna run for a couple minutes actually because it's going to install an entire theme. So I'll be back when it's done. So once that's complete, it should um, have created a folder on your computer in this specific location here. So users Quinton, oh my ZSH custom themes, power level 10K. Um, so you can actually try and look for that directory if you want to and see what's in there. But um, seeing as I know that it's there, what I'm gonna do is go over to my ZSHRC file again, which we had open in VS code over here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the theme instead of from Agnosta, we're gonna change it to power level 10K. So let's paste that in there. And now if we go back over to the terminal, something we're gonna have to do now is just close this terminal again. And uh, we need to make sure that it gets completely quit. So I'm just gonna quit it completely down there and then we'll open it again. And now that we've done that, it should have opened up the power level 10K config wizard. So this is gonna ask me a few questions and this is probably gonna go on for about five or six minutes, but um, it's just gonna ask me, does this look like a diamond? So I'm gonna say yes. Does this look like a lock? I'll say yes. Does this look like a Debian logo, which I don't know what that is, but it's asking if that's a swirl. So I'm just gonna say, yes, it does. So it's just trying to Config it and here is where we get the first bunch of options. So we've got prompt style. So this will determine what your command prompt actually starts looking like. And you can choose option one to have uh, this on the right hand side of your prompt down here. But I'm gonna go with option three because that's what I'm most used to. My eyes are kind of used to seeing that blue and that green section there like that. So I'm gonna say uh, option three. 
And now it's gonna ask me, do I want to use Unicode or as C? So I'm gonna say option one, Unicode. Uh, now it's again, just asking a little bit more about the format of these things. So we've got time here on the right hand side. This is usually the first thing I remove. So I'm gonna say option one for, I don't want any time. So this is just gonna give me how long it took for the command to run. So option one. Then I will um, just choose option one here. This is the angled separator and they all pretty much look the same. So I'll say one. Um, then I'm gonna choose option one here for the sharp edge, uh, but there's also a blurry edge or a slanted edge or a rounded edge, but uh, option one looks the best. Uh, then again, these are options for the tails. So what we want this end item to look like and I'm going to just say uh, flat. So it's flat on this side and it's flat on this side. So we'll say option one. Uh, prompt height. So this is gonna determine whether your prompt has two lines or if it has one line. So I'm gonna choose one line. Uh, then we have prompt spacing. I'm gonna choose compact. I don't like the sparse option. Uh, then we can determine if we want icons and how many icons we want in our uh, command line. So there's the few options or few icons option and then there's many icons. Uh, so I'm gonna go with option two for this one, just for the tutorials, I guess we can see um, how that looks. Then uh, for prompt flow, I'm going to just choose option one, concise, uh, enable transient prompt. Um, to be honest, I actually don't even know what this setting does. So I'll just say, uh, well, I'll, I'll say I'll say yes. Uh, transient prompt mode. Um, okay, I guess I'll just say disable instant prompts. Yeah, I'm just gonna go with one. Okay, then the next option here is, um, do we want to overwrite the current configuration file? So the reason why I'm getting this question is because I've already had power level 10K on my computer before. If you've never set this up, you probably wouldn't get asked this question, but I'm gonna say, yeah, let's overwrite that. Um, and now it's asking us, do we want to apply changes to this ZSHRC file? Now that's very, very important because it's going to make some changes to a file that we already have open, which is this file over here. So I think it's probably best that we just close this file so that we don't save over any of those changes. Uh, and now let's say, yes, let's apply those changes to the ZSHRC file. And so now all of our changes should have been saved. We've gone through the config and yeah, uh, now we've got the terminal that looks something like this. So let's hit clear. At this point, it's also worth noting that if you don't like the way that your terminal looks, you can always um, run that configuration again. So if you go back to the documentation, you can just run this command, p10k configure, and that'll run you through the uh, questions again, through the wizard. Of course, I'm just gonna say quit because I don't wanna go through that again. But I did remove some settings here on the right of my terminal. So if you wanna do the same thing, what you might wanna do is just open up this Z shell config file again, the ZSHRC file. So let's just copy that and let's open that up with VS code. So I'll type in code and then add that command and that should open this file up in uh, in GitHub. And if you scroll all the way down, the next thing this will tell you, or the thing that this will tell you right at the bottom of the file is if you ever want to create a custom configuration, then you can just open up this file here. So you can copy that file name and you can go back over to the terminal and you can type in code and then add that file name. And that should open that file in VS Code, which I actually already had open. And then what I did was I went to this write elements section and it actually had a lot of options in it. Like there were plenty of options in there. So I just took all of those out and saved. And that just means that nothing should ever appear on the right of my terminal. So if we close this, I don't have any time stamps or anything like that. Okay. So now that we've gone through some of the 
hectic configuration stuff. Um, let's take a look at some of the slightly easier things. So you, some other things that we might want to do are auto suggestions. So this is where you start typing and then it will auto complete the command for you. That's a nice one, but we have to follow instructions on a different site. And then something else we can also do is um, syntax highlighting. And this also requires brew. So if you haven't gone to brew or uh, brew.sh and run this command, you need to go run that. It does take a while to run this because it installs brew. But once you've done that, you can uh, run this command here, brew install sh uh, or install zsh syntax highlighting and that will install syntax highlighting onto your computer. And once that's done, we just need to run this command here, which will add a source to our Z shell file. And that should supply syntax highlighting as, um, as an option for our terminal. So if I clear, uh, you can already see that that's working. So when I type clear, you can see that that turned green. If I type in code, then that turns green. If I type in um, a, an example of something that's not going to work, like if I just start making up my own commands, like Dell, um, you see that that doesn't, that doesn't work, that's red. So syntax highlighting is quite nice to have. Now that we've done all of this stuff in iTerm, some of the other terminals on our computer might be broken just in terms of the icons, right? So if we go back over to Visual Studio Code, if you open that and you go to new terminal and you open that up, you might have little block icon things in that terminal, or if you open up your default terminal on your Mac, you might have little blocky things there. So what you need to do is you need to set the font for that to be Meslo. So you need to go into preferences, settings, and then uh, let's just look for settings JSON in VS Code, and that'll pop up eventually. And we need to just change the value for terminal integrated family. Now, if this isn't an option in your settings JSON file, you can simply type it in, or you can, um, if we go back over to the documentation in the same GIST, um, there is a section here on font family, uh, installing a patch font, there we go. And there are settings down here for Visual Studio Code, right? So what you need to do is just copy one of those values and paste it into Visual Studio Code. But none of these are the actual correct font. The correct font that we have to put in here is Meslo LGS. Uh, let me just paste it in. Meslo LGS NF. So if you save that now, that will fix the terminal in Visual Studio Code. And you can do the same thing for your default terminal on your Mac. If you ever decide you want to use this again, that's also going to have the same issue. So you just want to go to uh, preferences and then uh, text fonts. And you want to look for the font um, that we were using, which should be Meslo, LGS NF. And when you save that, um, that will fix your default terminal as well. So you just gotta make sure that you set that font family in all your terminals. Um, if you're ever gonna use any of the other terminals, I hardly ever use them because I spend most of my time uh, working from iTerm. Uh, and that is all I have for you in this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.